Hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of Soul Ishes, the show that's about everything soul. That's soul music, soul food, soul clothes, and most definitely, the most important of it all, soul attitude. I'm the host with the most Reggie Saunders, and today uh, is a very special guest. Um, just a real short story. We actually met through someone else, um, and um, the flow, you'll, you'll hear from the, by the way the flow of the conversation goes, it feels like we've known each other for a long time. Um, this man has um, played with some of the top musicians from all over the globe. Um, Mark Ronson, uh, Sharon, ha Sharon uh, Jones, Jones, Sharon, Sharon Jones, <laughs> Sharon, Sharon Jones, who's actually the, you know, she's the top face, and um, uh, Charles Bradley. Right. So, um, without further ado, um, I could give say so many things about this person, but I'll let him talk for himself. <laughs> uh, without further ado, please welcome to Soul Issues, the one and only Neil Sugarman. Over here, that's your camera. <laughs> Neil, how you living, man? I like that intro. You like that, huh? It was good? You good? You feel good? Yeah. We want to make you feel welcome. Build, 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 build. <laughs> cool, man. Business. Hey, there you go, there you go. No, man, this is great, this is great. I mean, from the first time we talked, I said, hey, you're exactly the type of person that would represent soul issues. You, you are the person because you, you eat, live, breathe. Well. <laughs> you do. You do. I, try, I don't know how I it started. Best, I don't know how it started, but I mean, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, OK, so check it out. Let's let's start it up here. Um, I know that you uh, started. Or I don't know if you started with, but I know that you play the saxophone. Yes. Was that your first instrument? It was. Yeah. yeah. OK, so have you ever played anything else or can you do other? Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm working as a as a record producer. You kind of have to be able to sit down and at all the instruments. And, exactly. And say, hey, man, what if you did ba boom? Exactly. Bam, exactly. Boom, boom, bam, boom, exactly. Boom. Right. And and maybe through demonstration or at least enough to and uh, playing enough instruments so that when you listen to mm -hmm. music, you can you know, you know what everyone else is doing. Exactly. I think that's an important thing. So Absolutely. a little bass, a little guitar, a little keyboards, Absolutely. but saxophone is really... That's you. That's how I, that's how I can express myself on, on the saxophone. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So um, uh, let's see. From that, I don't want to go right into... Okay, I might as well say it since it's on my mind. I don't want to go right into the label or to, to, the, yeah, to yeah. the name of the band. Um, I want to, before we get there... Uh, Give me a little history about your upbringing as far as um, in the soul scene. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I mean, how, you know. Wherever you want to start. Soul, man, okay, so listen, I, you know, I was always into music as a little kid. Okay. I always wanted to play music. Even when I was listening to my dad's records, I was like, he had the big jazz collection. Right. And I'd put the records on and I'd feel like I wanted to be a musician. Man. There you go. Like, um, and then, you know, Practiced my horn. Right. Went to Berklee College of Music. I was from Boston at oh, the time, okay. so it wasn't like a big stretch. F right after that, I moved to New York, and and, right. and, and and you know, I was working. You know, it was it was cool at the beginning. You know, trying to make ends meet, right. catering, whatever. Exactly. But over over a certain amount of time, I was <clears throat> I was able to. The calendar gets full, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you start putting those gigs in the book. There you go. And the next thing you know, you're turning down the work that you thought you needed to to pay the rent is starting to be the work that you always wanted to do. There so, you go. And, and, and I think the reason I got called was that I was not like this virtuosic saxophone player, but I love playing music. So mm. for me, to be in a band setting is trying to make that band sound as good as it can without... Absolutely. You know, and I, and I think which led me, you know, so this happened in New York. I got. I was real into playing with Hammond organ. I was real into bluesy music. Gotcha. I was never like modern jazz player. I right. always loved, you know. So at, the more I got into it, the more I was, you know, went from oh John Coltrane sounds good, but Gene Ammon sounds real good. Stanley right. Turnstein sounds real. <laughs> Maceo Parker, man, you know, <laughs> Junior Walker. So right. I was like a blues guy. Okay. And so I was getting called to do more and more of that stuff, which led me to like playing even uptown in Harlem with a lot of organ players. 
Um, you know, that, that whole B3 scene was a big thing for me. So long story short, I eventually met my partner at Daptone, right. this guy Gabe Roth, right. who exactly. was also into the same stuff, and we had like mine, and then we started the Dap Kings. And that you met in, uh, you in met New him York. and started in New York? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and that, I, I believe the, um, I had the own, label is still in New York? Yes, it's it is. It's still there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had my own band called the Sugarman Three, and we, okay. put out, we were touring um, all over, you know, okay. played the big festivals. Exactly. And, and that was like a real, that was like an instrumental okay. soul jazz group. Um, so that was in the late, that was like kind of like the late 90s. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And Gabe, and Gabe had, a, had another label before Daptone called Desco Records. Exactly. I, yeah. And Desco was like, that was kind of my first scene. You know, they were, they had this band, The Soul Providers, and, and they had signed Lee Fields, who right. still tours and is a good friend of mine and someone, you know, I'm still involved with musically, who I think is really one of the greatest, aside from you, man, but the greatest <laughs> living sing, like soul Appreciate singer, the props. old yeah. school soul singer that's still right. out there crushing. Uh -huh. um, so, okay, so from, yeah, the, uh, Gabe was producing the records, right. and then there was an opportunity, Gabe and his, pre his partner at Desco were just not getting, there were, there were some issues, you know, mm -hmm. how, mm -hmm. how it is. It can happen. Yeah, um, so I kind of was like, man, Let's let's do them. Mm -hmm. and, and Gabe was like, "Man, I'll make them if you sling them." <laughs> I was like, "Whatever, you know." I didn't I didn't know exactly what that meant, but you right, know, right, yeah, you understood man, later. Yeah, right? no, man, I, I dig it. I, I I like all of it, man. I, I was in, you know, my band, the Sugarman Three, was self managed. Okay. So I kind of had one, you know, I kind of always had a little bit of affinity for the business. Exactly, the organizi organizational yeah, side of it, way. yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you know, that helped me a lot, like, or, like managing my own band, starting with, you know, of course, everyone has to keep track of what, how they're gonna pay the rent, so that, that's where it starts, but then you start bringing other people into the fold, Absolutely. and then suddenly you're buying plane tickets for a group of people, right. and you're putting a tour together, and you're, you're meeting booking agents, Absolutely. and you're, you're advising them on what we want to do, and right. how we want to do it, and how the, the records coming out is going to affect the touring, you know, the, 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 the picture starts to kind of grow. Exactly, exactly. So I, I kind of, you know, and, and, I, and I, it was cool with me, I dug it, you know. And cool, I, and, cool. But the, the important thing for me was that I kept playing too, you know, ah, I wasn't. Exactly. You didn't, one, didn't, one didn't, didn't two, one one did, you didn't sacrifice one for the other. I don't think so, in fact, that was, um, you know, I, had, I really was, I liked the fact that I knew, like, okay, I'm in the office for, for, for a few months here, you know, still playing. I, I, even when we were at Daptone, I would, we'd be in the office, right. and then I'd run downstairs, cut some overdubs, go back, get on the call, make wow. some deals. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it was cool, man. It was really flowing. And cool. then, um, and then uh, you know, I knew, hey, I'm going to go on tour. Right. And I told the, 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 the guys in the office, like, man, when I'm on tour, like, I have to, it's important for me. I'm going to keep up with my emails, but that's, you have to what, be I'm, present that's what I'm there, doing. Exactly, yeah, yeah, you know, and I don't want to miss out on that, that opportunity and, and that hang that happens on the tour bus and being with the Abs cats. And, absolutely. And, you know. so it's such a big part of the whole thing. Yeah, and it also, I think, I think it, you know, it, it helped me understand the artists that we're working with, too, mm. you know? And being an artist, I have a different kind of, I think absolutely. Daptone as an artist-run label has a different kind of Absolutely, line because of you can understand what the artist because you are one. Of I can them. advise them, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I'm not, I'm and, they, not, and they actually yeah. will actually listen to you because yeah. they say, hey, he's one of us. Definitely, man. I'm not trying to get over it. I exactly. mean, we're putting out records. We're putting out records that we love, mm -hmm. and we could probably have made a lot more money uh -huh. with the opportunities of people coming to us, like, hey, will you put our record out? And it's like, man. I don't want to work that hard, number one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, if we're not feeling, I'd rather, you know, it's, it's really like, you know, we've built this catalog very, it's a very uh, boutique exactly. catalog because we've touched, it's, uh, we've touched every record. We mm. produce them ourselves. We, we cook them, you know, we bake them, and we serve them. There you go, man. And, and, and we're not relying on anyone else. And there you we're go. not trying to get in to a situation because we're not chasing some, they go. Uh, you know, something that some other label has done. Exactly. They're there chasing you. what we're doing. There you go. But <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Daptone started, um, if I'm not mistaken, 2001, right? 
Yeah, we're we're getting into our twenty. We're planning our twentieth anniversary. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna actually release this. Um, one of the highlights was we did this Daptone Super Soul review, which is you know five uh, five five bands on the road together. Wow. Auntie Ballas, Sugarman Three, Son and Star, Charles Bradley, Sharon Jones, um, and then the little you know Binky Griptite who was the MC. Right. So anyways, man, we we did I think when was three or four nights at the Apollo. Cool. That sold out every night. Cool. Man. It was it was cool. like the pinnacle, cool. man. So we recorded everything. Uh -huh. So look for that. Cool, cool. Yeah. Is it get question? Speaking of <laughs> speaking of the Apollo, you know, we know some of the history of, of the Apollo. The Apollo. Hell yeah. I'm telling the people the Apollo in uh, New York. In Harlem. The one yeah. that you see, you know, when, when you go in, you know, they rub that that um, the tree, the the stump. Yeah. You know, they rub that for good luck, I guess. You know, like that. Being that you played there. Uh, did you, I'll put it like this, did you go in with any type of like angst, you know, in the sense of like, you know, so many of the greats that had already been there yeah, with man. expectations, or did you go feeling like, hey, I this belong. is home. <laughs> right, exactly. You know what I'm saying, uh, you know? You know, man, did I'm, you, not, I'm not, I, you know, I've done a lot of gigs and, and I've played in a lot of venues and the Apollo was... It, it, it's it's like a special venue, okay, because of the history. And I mean, I think for us, it's even like the the James Brown show was always there. And right. Sam Cook played there, right. and and you hear the stories about, um, yeah, like the, all you know, all the all the, the the temptations live at the Apollo. Anybody and, who was ever, yeah, everybody yeah. was anybody. So that, that was like. We were anxious, man. We yeah. were anxious to, to, to feel that vibe and mm -hmm. get on that stage and, and be part of that legacy. And I always felt like, hopefully, what sets Daptone apart from um, a lot of sort of retro labels or a label that might be considered retro, and I'm not, uh, we wear our, our influences on our sleeve, you know, it's, it's, the lineage is there, but, you know, we're trying to be thoughtful, and, and it felt like when we were in the Dap Kings with Sharon and Charles and back in those singers, that we were part of that legacy. I hope, you know, that without... Hey, from what I've seen, yeah. and like I told you, uh, my first introduction to the Dap Kings were, uh, Dap Tones, sorry. Uh, yeah, the Dap, Dap Kings Tone, band. Dap King, what, yeah. I'm mixing know, it up. Man, it's all the same. <laughs> There's Dap a Dap lot of Daps. Yeah, yeah, Sharon <laughs> Stone and the Dap Tones. Um, Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. Sharon Jones, Sharon Jones and the Dap Tones. Dap Kings. Dap Kings. It, I'm flipping it up, <laughs> man. Y'all want to get it right for the people because they're going to be looking for yeah, this. Yeah. I don't want to give them anything wrong. Sharon Jones and the Dap King. On Dap Tone Records. On, hey! It's all dap, baby. It's yeah, all dap. Yeah, that's right. It's all dap. <laughs> so um, my first introduction was somebody had told me about. You know, uh, man, it's just a quick antidote. Like, go for it. When we were starting, like, I would get people on the phone. I'd say Daptone Records. I'd be like, Daptone? <laughs> And I'd be like, no, Daptone. And then the first time I called someone, like even like, you know, like some operator, like right. someone in some like, you right. know, you know, where I'm in the offices in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm calling, and I'm like, hey, my name, my e my email address, Daptone Records, like Daptone Records. Right. I love Daptone Records. <laughs> Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, man. So we made it. We went from Deftone to right, exactly Daptone right, right. Zone, the you know? the real your own personal stamp, your yeah, own personal yeah, yeah, acknowledgement. <laughs> no, no. But the, my first encounter with you guys or, or heard about was somebody told me about uh, Daptones, and then, um, then I said okay, and it was, it just happened to be that I was at the Montreal Jazz Festival. And I go every year. Yeah. Unfortunately, can't can this year. But uh, every year I go, whether I'm performing there or not, because just to be in that vibe, just yeah. for for the, the length of time, to me, this just you know, it's people all over. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm like in the, I believe it was Stravinsky Hall, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was Stravinsky Hall, and I'm like in that say. And uh, I think it was it was either Claude or his uh, assistant. I don't know who it was. But the announcer came out, I think it was Claude. Ladies and gentlemen, coming all the way with that New York vibe, give it up for the Daptones! And I'm the Daptone, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the da it was the Daptone Soul Review. That would have been Daptone like Soul Review, exactly yeah. what it was, to, to yeah. actually make it totally clear. Give yeah. it up for the Daptone Soul Review! Yeah. 
and like you guys just came out. I'm like, Jack, Jack, don't take it to Jack. Who are these people and why have I never heard of them before? My God, man. Yeah, Immediately, no. I'm, I'm getting chills yeah, now just man. thinking about the vibe. Yeah, me too, man. So that was we the... Hit, fuck, we yeah, hit you, you hit it, bam. Like, yeah, you, you didn't waste boom. any time. Just bam, right yeah, from the start. No, man, and we, to the end. And then, if that wasn't enough, Sharon came out. Yeah. You're talking about a, a, a ball of fire, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. The sun it's, and the moon and a couple was, of stars. It was deep, dude. It was deep. I mean, then, and then Charles came out. And what I loved about him, just, just a footnote about him, because I'm an observer. I like to, I'm, I'm taking the home, eating everything, I'm digest, digesting everything. What I loved and what I noticed about him was that after he finished, while he was doing it, and he showed it after he finished, was that he was so appreciative mm. that people would actually come out and see him. He looked, I saw it in his eyes. Yeah. He looked out yeah, that was and he thing, looked to man. the audience and you could just see him, thank you so much. I'm taking all the love, thank you so much. In a very sincere, yes. heartfelt way. It wasn't any shenanigans no, there. No, and no, no, people, people, he, he, people recognize that. Absolutely, and the then at the end, this is the thing that cap, uh, capsul, cap, capitalized, uh, capsulized the whole thing, was um, when he finished his part, he left the stage, and I guess, I mean, I've been on stages like that. You could go out through the back or whatever. He came off the stage like this. He passed me too. Uh, you came, didn't get a hug? You, you got what I'm, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he came by and he sincerely hugged as many people yeah. as he could. And yeah. I said, wow, that to me yeah. is the stamp of a real person that's a great artist. Well, I think, I think Sharon had that too in a different way. What Sharon had, Charles was like this connection like and, and he was always telling his story it was and it was a sad story man. yeah like, yeah you could hear the it world going up in flames and and he, he's singing he was kind of this he, he grew up in very adverse conditions he grew up in brooklyn he didn't really go to school he mm. was he was basically illiterate mm. he 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 worked very hard he he was able to escape a lot of the uh situations that many of his peers got into right. which would have been that whole like in the 70s, exactly. like the crack thing exactly. that, that just wiped a generation of sure people did. out. Absolutely. And, uh, and he, the, I think he kept his nose down because he, he was always private, but he, you know, he just worked and he was able to get, get on with people. And, and, uh, but man, so, and, and you know, he, he came up in Brooklyn doing James Brown, and he was a James Brown impersonator. Exactly, I read about that. His, 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 if, you know, if you go way back, it was called Black Velvet. And there's actually a documentary about him. Uh -huh. It's called, uh, is it uh, Soul of America, I think? Or, or, yeah, you know. I may have even seen it. Is that on YouTube also? You, I, can check you it know, out. it's probably is there somewhere. Okay. Is it, is it, oh, man, what is it? I think it's Soul of America. It could be. Yeah. That sounds like the title. Charles Bradley. So, anyways, he, you know, he just. <laughs> came up in a very strange time and, and just always kept, music is what kept him alive. And then we met him in uh, nine, like it must have been, uh, yeah, 98, 99. And, and he recorded on my record, Sugarman 3 record, the song Take It As It Comes. Right. And, um, you know, at that time he was really doing a James Brown thing. Like it was hard to sh for him to shake that. Right. And we were like, man, let's, so we really worked with him and gave him a platform mm -hmm. and he started mm -hmm. working with our friend Tom Brennick. Mm -hmm. And just, they, they would write, they, they had this connection and they were, Tom was really able to tap into Charles, like what he had to offer, which are these simple stories and really truthful he stories. He really sung his, his heart life. on his sleeve. He, man, you saw I, it. You I, honestly, yeah, yeah, I, would, I would weep at his gigs. Wow. Like, he, wow. He, you wow. know, and as someone I knew, he just, he, he, he would, he was not fronting, man. He no. would sing. No. And he, you know, there's different types of singers, right? Right. There's like, I wouldn't say he was a technical singer, he had a tone. Right, exactly. And even like saxophone players, they're guys I just love and they can play one note, it doesn't matter. And you, he just had this tone that, that resonated Absolutely. like, Absolutely. Ooh, you know, he had a thing. Absolutely. And, and, and what, another and he, thing, go ahead. Yeah? Another thing that I noticed, um, of which I really appreciate uh, as a front man or a front woman, is that he really knew how to connect. 
to the audience. And, and, uh, and to me, that is, that is an attribute that um, most performers, or um, uh, some performers, um, unfortunately, either don't appreciate or don't think it's, uh, or don't think it's valuable in the sense they, I know some, and I'm not saying all, but some performers, um, when they hit the stage, it's all about them. Yeah, well, some people feel awkward, or there, there's an ego thing, right? Which, and, and I don't mean ego like I'm great. There's an ego which is like you're looking at yourself. Is that, yeah. So you're, you're, you're not yeah. present sometimes. You're kind of present in the sense that you're um, thinking about what you should be doing. Ah. Not what you are doing. Ah. The, I think the pure performers are in the moment, right? And that 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 comes across. That comes uh, that comes off the stage. It doesn't like come off the stage. Right. It comes off. The, there you go. Out, out of Absolutely. The stage. Thousand and there's certain people who have that. And certain, you know, I've been on the stage with people where it really just drops off, and they can sing great. And but Charles, the, one of his thing was that like it was just he was in the moment and, and he would resonate mm -hmm. the room and people would react to that because they were seeing something so raw, so pure and so, you, said you, you know, it. emotional. You said it. Absolutely. And he was, he was not afraid to share that with to the audience. To bear his soul. Yeah, he was yeah. just out there. He was like, And hey. singing about some very intense, um, right. you know, emotional experiences that he had. And he would, he, he would come off the stage it was an experience for him. Now Sharon, on the other hand, she also had had this, but in a, in a different context. Okay. Sharon came up singing in weddings, you know. Okay. So like, what she learned how to do in that wedding situation was like turn any situation into a party. So she'd be singing <laughs> in front of like that. grandma and the little that. kids, yeah, yeah. And, and and she could make everyone feel as though exactly. she's singing to them. And, exactly. And she wasn't bullshitting either. Right, right. But when she got in, she had this ability in a bigger hall right. to con to keep that thing alive, mm -hmm. and everyone felt as though. Mm -hmm. She was looking right at them and like, man, she looked at me. She gave me, you know, she was singing that for, you know. <laughs> exactly, right, she, right, right. She, she, she knew Make what each, I was feeling, you know, Exactly, yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is different than Charles, because Charles was, Charles was just burying himself. Right. Uh -huh. you know, where Sharon was like, but, but they're both of them, man, they, they both were not, they were both like, were 100% in the music and it wasn't it like. Showed. Yeah, they weren't. You know, that's that's and and, and the band too. You know, absolutely, it, was like we it put showed. A, we put a tough band, and we absolutely, were we were man. grooving, and and that's what they were feeding off of. You know, it's totally kicking. And man, I, I don't. You know, I, I I wasn't I wasn't around seeing bands in the '60s, but from what I hear, I think that that was more the. Um, what was happening, you know, behind James Brown or behind Dyke and the Blazers or behind Sam Cooke or, you know, these musicians that were deep in it and, and making a groove where I don't want to criticize music now, but there's a lot of stuff that gets is thinned out. And that's just because of maybe because of as 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 more records and more genres of music come to light and people are drawing from mm -hmm. the whole idea of fusion music. Right, right, right. It can work, but it can also not work. True. I think a lot of times, you know, the, the, the essence of what you're actually wanting to put out gets lost in the mix. Yeah. Somehow, you know. Yeah. And sad. Let's go right here to a couple of questions here. What is the meaning of dap? Oh, dapper. What's the meaning of dapper? I know, <laughs> but the audience doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. Talk to them. There, yeah, yeah. there you are. Well, Tell dappers, the people. Dappers, man, if you're clean, you know, you come out, ah. you come out you're on the bandstand, and, 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 and we're all wearing suit and ties and right. playing and stepping right. and, uh, and making people go like, wow, I want to I wanna be involved in that. There you go. You know, Absolutely. I wanna, to be dapper is like... This, you know, someone, someone notices you. Uh -huh. You know, you're walking down the street and it's like, hmm. What's that? You know, where's he going? I want to go where he's going. Exactly, because you, know? you know that's going to be a great place, yeah, wherever yeah, he's yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's that dude's dapper, you know, he's, he's dapper Dan. <laughs> there you go. So, okay, that was Alan734, who's always oh, shit, here. This is like, and this, I hope I meet second, Alan is, one uh, day. Th yeah, this, this is, is yeah, questions from the, uh, yeah, yeah, these are people writing. The audience. So, Glenn, oh, no shit. Glenn Cook, uh, he wants to know, how do you prefer to play, um, or hi, do you prefer to play with, uh, live or record it wow. in the studio? That's, that's, that's a great question, man, because um, I think they're both 
I love recording music, man, especially when we're like in the Dap Kings and you're working with good producers. And, you know, I mean, like we recorded the Amy Winehouse record. We mm -hmm. did so many, mm -hmm. so many records and creating music in the studio. Um, and I always felt what made even the Dap Tone stuff um, great was the fact that you could see these bands and they sounded great, but then you listen to the records and the records were bona fide. They it wasn't go. like, oh, the record's thin or the record sounds Absolutely. like right. some new, it doesn't sound as good as the experience live. Mm -hmm. So they, they do go hand in hand, but it starts with the record. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts with us being in a room and, and, and if you're lucky enough to be with a group of musicians that don't have egos, right. and we, we would sit and we would workshop some tunes and. Um, and and it would you know we'd spend a lot of time trying little nuanced things like, what about this beat? What about this conga pattern? Right. What are this horn line? No, and then we'd, we'd really work it up to the place where it could have been recorded, and then we're just like, man, it just doesn't feel right. And right. then you'd erase that and you'd start over, you know. But you can only do that when you when you're with a bunch of people you trust. Sure, sure. Like, sure. what if we try this? Yeah, let's try it. Like, not. You know, not like uh, trying it because, you know, mm. it's stroking his ego, but really trying it Absolutely. and trying everyone's idea. And then at the end, like, yeah, nah, that didn't work. Right. Even I, if it was your idea or someone else's idea, but then the best idea uh -huh. was the one that was the was one, the one that, that, we that came would to use, the cream, you know? to the crop. Unfortunately, it was always gay, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> he would humor us, man. He'd be like, he was always, let's try his idea. I'll yeah, wait on right. my idea. <laughs> I'm sure you got a few in too. Yeah. But um, um, I like that concept of, and I'm sure you've heard of it, uh, that Motown, one of those Motown things that you, you'd have to have been there to actually know if it was true or not. But um, they said that, uh, was it Barry Gordy? I would say uh, after a song was recorded, before they would put it out, they would have a, uh, a vote. Yeah, yeah. And they say, you know, vote now. Now, okay, now if you had $1, or if you had a dollar, if you had some money, would you buy a sandwich? <laughs> no, I'd buy this track. Oh, would you buy yeah. this track? I love that. Man. Isn't it? You yeah, heard that too, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Well, I knew there was some like committee, you yeah. know. Which is always, which is, is tricky, man, because like we've sometimes done committees and it uh -huh. didn't, me and Gabe ended up not liking what the other people were like, ah. right. I mean, we try to, you try to be diplomatic, but I guess if you're sitting in a room with Smokey Robinson and, you know, Barry Gordy and, right. and, and, and you know, this, this group of guys and everyone has a good take on stuff. But, um, you know, I, I had, I was able, I haven't really unfortunately hung out, you know, we're, we're actually talking to Smokey Robinson. He wanted to do some tracks with us. Right. And, Right. So I really, I'm really a huge fan of that stuff, but I haven't had sort of firsthand, um, that much firsthand connections with that people from that st who were recording in that studio. But I did have a lot. I'd spend a fair amount of time with like Steve Cropper, right? And I was able to ask him about the whole stacks thing. Exactly. And exactly. It was, and it was surprisingly it was the same thing, man. They would spend a lot of time working these songs out. And you hear these Otis Redding tracks. They don't sound like one of my they favorite were artists. Really, me too. Yeah. And the way those records sound, they're so pure and. But um, yeah, man, that, that's when I realized, like, hey, man, they, you know, we were, we were tapping into some of the same stuff that I absolutely. Think they were I think into. a lot of a lot of um, um, labels, if you will, um, took their cues uh, probably from Motown a bit, but also it, it, it was it was almost like a, a um, how can I say a gumbo? You know, everybody was just uh, eating off of this, and, and and it wasn't like it was like. I'll put, it, I'll put it to you like this. I was having a discussion with a friend the other day, and we were talking about music of today that uh, is under the heading of soul um, uh, or r and R &B, I guess you could say that too. And in some ways becomes popular. And the generation of today, they say, wow, <clears throat> wow, that's... Um, that's really something really cool, and that's something, you know, in a sense, original. And, excuse me. And then the artist has the, in my opinion, uh, not only the responsibility, but the obligation to say, cool, I'm glad you appreciate it and love it, but let me tell you the roots yeah. of where this came from. And there's some artists that either willfully won't 
or don't know, or think, oh, I can't believe they don't know, um, it, to acknowledge, you know, hey, this is the, the, the heritage, or this is, this is the, this is the lineage of, of, this, of this music, you know, instead of taking, and to me, when you do that, you not only, um, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, smear or, or defeat your own purpose, uh, but you cut, how to say, you cut, cut the nose off and spite the hand yeah, and man, cut well, the whatever. Man, like, we're you all understand? standing on the shoulders of someone else. We you know? are, yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah. And, that's and that's the, not a bad thing to no, acknowledge man, but that. It's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, of course, man. It's like, it, it, and, and when you don't acknowledge it, I guess you're not really taking advantage of the history that came before and you're trying to relearn things. That's like that lesson that, you know, is certainly happening in politics now. But uh, the thing is, is... Uh, yeah, no, we like for instance with Daptone get on the music side it, that that you know whether you're talking about visual every art has that there are certain outsiders that mm. can come in mm. like phenomenons mm. that come in and they're almost so quirky that they weren't influenced by something else and they created a genre absolutely. of their own. But, absolutely. but in general I think unfortunately that's a few and far between right. most of us really have to if you don't know you know, if you don't know where you came from, and and that's a, I guess I'm wondering if a lot of pop singers of today really know the hit like about gospel music and soul music and, and yeah. But I, I look at it like from. this: it's like you know, you can't say, "Oh, I didn't know that," because there's so much information out there. It's easy if you yeah. want. It's well, easy to music, easy to access. Then, and you can I call it if you don't know it, then you're willfully ignorant. Yeah, well, you know, you know if you're into it, you, that, that's part of the process. Like, I mean, when we were on. coming up, man, I was just digging records. Like, yeah. who do you think that person listened to? Who did that listen, person exactly, listen to? Exactly, exactly. And, and you, find your, you find there. your lineage. You find, like, oh, man, John Lee Hooker. I bet Jimi Hendrix was digging John Lee Hooker. Right, listen, they right, found so right, much right. They like. And then, like, you know, the, 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 it, go, it goes on and on and on. Right. But I was going to say one of the things about Daptone, um, is that we were all we, we always had our own studio so we okay. everything was done in-house like it was okay. never a situation where we said hey here's a bunch of the, how most labels work is here's a budget go make a record mm. some band goes off makes a record right. they hand it back in they, you know, the, the A&R people may say, hey, you know, what if we did, you did go in back and did a song like this. But no, we were, it, and that's to me like the Motown and Stax and, and almost all the labels in the 60s, Capsule, mm. Dynamic Label, mm. there was labels in every regional label, it was always a studio, a producer, and then the musicians who came in. Absolutely. Even Sam Cooke, like SARS Records. Right. They, you know, you, these are, they were making records. They weren't like putting records out. Right, exactly. They were making records and putting them out. And that's kind of the, that's, that's our business model. You uh huh. Know? Uh huh. Let's go to a couple of more questions here. Let's see. What, what is it? What happened to Amy Winehouse? Yeah, what happened to Amy Winehouse? What yeah. happened to her? Yeah, everyone knows what happened to yeah, her. Yeah, we know she's, she's, yeah. she's unfortunate. But I, what I want to ask you, which is connected to that a little bit, um, give me um, the beginning uh, story up until what do you know. Okay. Not of Amy Winehouse. Okay. You can talk about that too. But of uh, Daptone uh, or the Dap Kings with, um, with uh, Mark Ronson. What did you guys do uh -huh. together? Okay, so the whole relationship with Mark sort of came. We, you know, we started. There was a, he had this record called Versions, right? Which is really it's a cool record. It was like, uh, and and on Versions he did. It was like he. It was a covers record, and uh, it, the record did very well. And at first he was just using the horn section. So mm. so me, it was the horn section was me on tenor. Dave Guy on trumpet, and okay. Ian Hendrickson Smith on baritone. And okay. that was the Dap King's horn section. That was all the records, naturally, 100 Days, 100 Nights. Right. Um, and Mark was tapping into us. And we did this one album with him, um, Versions, which was, uh, that was, I think uh, Valerie was on Versions. The, the, okay. the, and, and, and a whole bunch of other artists. Uh -huh. and it was, uh -huh. It's a really cool record. It's worth checking out. 
And through that, he, you know, I was in the studio with Mark a lot, and I was like, man, you got to tap into the Dap Kings rhythm section, you know, you're, you're, you know, come over to our place because I was going to his studio in Soho a lot, right? Almost weekly to work on this album with him, uh -huh. and then uh, so he started coming in, and then he started using the Dap Kings, and then he was like, I have this artist I'm producing, and uh, you know, I want you guys to do the album. Or he didn't produce the whole album, the, the tracks that he had, which was probably three quarters of the album. Mm, and I think mm. kind of some of the memorable tracks. Um, so we, he, he gave, you know, he was, the reason I think Mark is a good producer is he knew when to, when he gave suggestions, they were real good. Mm. And when he didn't have to give suggestions, he kind of let the band do what they wanted to. Ah, so when okay. we're writing, you know, we were sitting, we were, he, he liked our process. Right. So, and our process was like, we work on the rhythm section, and then like I remember sitting in our studio coming up with the horn lines for rehab. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all those horn lines, da, 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 that was just us, that's how we came up with lines. Cool. We'd listen and, you know, start that's playing so cool, stuff. Man. And that's the same such thing, like, feeling. oh, what if we do this and, you know, we jam on it for a while and right, like, that's right, it, right, you know? Right. Um, so, yeah, man, that was a cool experience. And so Mark was really tapping into the Dap Kings for a while. Yeah. And still does. I mean, you know, the funny thing after versions, I think that he got this rap like, oh, Mark is only good when he has a horn section. So then he got it with like, <laughs> I'm not going to use a horn section on my next record. It was like, oh, like, it's like you're going to do, you know. So, but he's still, to this day, I think a big, most of the records he's still using, uh, you know, Homer Steinweiss on drums yeah. and Tom Brennick and Nick Mavshan, which yeah. was the, the, the rhythm section. Cool, 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 cool. No, so I, mean, I, 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 I feel this... like we have this, I came up with this crew of musicians that have played on a lot of records right, that exactly. people don't know. And they're all just like, just ser great dudes and, and serious musicians that don't take themselves too serious. And right. it's a vibe, man. Right, it's right. Cool. So this, this artist that he said that he, he has this new artist that's coming to work. I guess that was Amy. That was Amy, and he that said, oh Amy. yeah, this is, this is gonna be really big, you know, I, I think this is gonna be big, and it's gonna win a Brit Award, she, you know, she had her first album. And to be honest, man, like, I, I think that, I think I love that record, and I think that record had a huge impact, and it was one of these things, it's like a record that everyone could relate to, which mm. is something that's I feel really cool. Like, there are records in history, whether it's Carole King Tapestry, or, you know, some, just, just records that everyone had in their collection, and right. their moms liked it, and they liked it, and, and that, that wine, that, that, um, that, that, you know, Back to Black was one of those albums. So to be involved in that, something that big was mm -hmm. really great. Um, but, you know, when I first heard her voice, it wasn't, it's, it's It didn't jump out to you? No, man, it's like- Was, it, was it too different for you that no, it didn't? Just, I didn't, I, I dug, I, I like singers that are coming out of church. You know, she had this kind of like, saying sideways. Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah. Rrr, 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 you know, and I, I love her and she wrote great music and she had such a vibe and she right. was the one, and she influenced tons of singers, but, and I don't want to talk too much. I don't want. But it's you know, right. man is like I there's certain artists who have their place, and then there's people they influenced a whole bunch of people, and like, man, don't try to sing like that because that's not really the coolest way to sing. This is true, but the thing is that, that what's interesting about that is that um, though, and you may not be the only one that feels that way. I'm sure. But she had this something about her. I think yes. it was her, I don't know if it was the beehive hair that no, she man, came she up wrote, with. She had this type she, of thing. And the songs. The songs. That, were, that, was. that was so attractive. Yeah. Yeah. And the way she delivered them, in, in a way. Yeah. Okay, let me see here. No, we, we did tour. I toured with her, too. You know, it was, it, was, it was a cool experience. It's cool being involved in that, like, it's, th that record blew up. Big time, and we were uh, we were like playing those gigs. We the first gig was a tiny bar in, right. in Manhattan, and then like we do South by Southwest, and people are all trying to get in. And, <laughs> you know, she was she was a, you know I think that that one of the, she was super cool, and that was one of the things she wasn't. She was really, laid back. She wasn't. She wasn't like. No oh, man, I remember the first time we she, like they called us. They were like. Hey, we're coming into the states to do some gigs. You, the Dap Kings, you know, we want you guys to do the gigs. It's like great. 
Where, and I didn't, I was a little naive because I wasn't thinking like she was so big already. So she's like, can we rehearse, where can we rehearse? And I was like, well, we could rehearse at Daptone. But you know, something's going on over there. My friend has a, ba we can rehearse in my friend's basement. And they were cool. And it was like, they co everyone's coming in with limos and going into my friend's basement. We should have been in some fancy rehearsal space. But she was late to the rehearsal okay. because she went record shopping and she came with a stack of Dinah Washington records, you know? So to me, that's, she, was, she was into music, you know? She wasn't like a regular, like She was one. Yeah, she was, does, she was one, yeah. I don't know if, Alicia, like, well, Alicia Keys probably has checked out a lot of music, but there's a Seems lot of pop way. stars that, I'm wondering if they were really into, like, no, what, because, what, you know, was, what was, Amy was, Amy got into it because of music. Right, exactly. It wasn't like she, she wanted to be a star. In fact, I think that was the downfall of her. As a matter of fact, yeah, yeah. this is what actually showed on the stage. That wasn't her comfort, yeah, her yeah. comfort place. That wasn't she her She wanted second to make home. music. And I'll tell you, man, the best is like, hey, can you give me the chord for the first song? And then she, Binky would play a song, and she's like, I don't need the nine and the seven in the chord. Just give me the triad. It's like, go, girl. You know what I'm talking about? She heard stuff. Cool, and that's man. A, she's a real musician. Yeah, absolutely. And she, when we were playing, we are like, oh, well, what do you want us to do? She's like, do you. Like, do the Dap Kings. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And you guys definitely did it. Let's go over here. Um, let's see. What comes after Spotify? What do you, what, you have any? Um... Hey, man, hopefully, hopefully Spotify sticks around for, forever. Yeah. I love it. Okay. I mean, it's working for us at this point. It took a long time, but now you have a good catalog. People listen to music all the time. Absolutely. No one's stealing it. It's not, no one's getting rich, but everyone's making a little bit of dough. There you go. You know? Okay, what do you think of the bands, of, of the uh, future for bands and bands now that... Future um, for bands and labels that we have. Yeah. This new normal, oh, because of Corona. Yeah, oh, man, corona, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's rugged. It's really hard. I, I, I think it's too early to say what the future is, and I don't know if it's live streaming, which feels horrible, and a lot of the artists, all the managers are, hey, can we get a streaming thing happening? Man, I just, I'll tell you what it is. It's, Mother's got to sit home and not go out and not shake hands with people and get this shit under wraps. Like yeah. the idea of this economy falling apart in the U.S. I can speak for the U.S. more like, you know, greedy people opened up this economy. Only the rich people are like, man, you got to get back to work. Yeah, yeah, the poor yeah. people are not like, they're, no, no, they're, no. they're sitting, they're like, hey, man, I can sit, sit down for another month. We did two months of lockdown. Right. You needed to do four months, five months, and exactly. they went too early, and they, they're, you know, exactly. and, 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 and the corporations are trying to, I don't want to get on the sword, it's but not, man, No, I feel man, you, I, I feel you on that, it, it's you crazy. Know, the only way this thing's gonna get squashed is, is, is due diligence, and I'll be honest, until that happens, man, it's crushing so many musicians, and you know, we're in a situation where we want to put albums out, but without touring, man, we gotta get back What's, to normal, but absolutely. the only way back to normal is like, put this yeah, yeah. fire out and, yeah. I mean, that's, and, but the thing and it's is that like you're gonna, you're gonna need more than just a few yeah man everyone you know? everyone has to everyone has, well, is wearing masks I mean we're lucky here in Switzerland but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's you the, gotta the, keep your eye the, on it curvins so um, I don't know what the normal is gonna be man. so Alan wants to Alan 734 uh, see how how do you tell the hit potential man I'm the wrong person to ask I can tell <laughs> if I like a song hit potential but isn't that funny though you have some that's oh man have, I've had, had so many produce oh a Reg, yo, hey, this is your first hit. Yeah. And I think that was back in... You know, you can buy it. That was hit, back dude. in 20... You know, man, that was, money, no, money. it was back in 19-something. Yeah. 19 I don't know. Yeah. So I'm still, you know... I don't know. When you talk about a hit song, that, that, that's like a... you talking about like a big song on the radio. That, that shit is bought. Ah! I don't know, man. You know, they're, they're, it's a, a, a number of... of Conversation, but like, I mean, okay, now go I'm on. in love with your body. Oh, like, that's okay. You're talking saying, about that, man, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about that. I'm more, I'm more in the I line like of what songs are like, you know, we, 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 we have a hard time. We've never really had hit songs. We've never, had, you know, there are few have you had it any we, type we of have, we have we have songs like, that like I'm talking like, 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 uh, no. Dap, Dap, uh, Dap, Dap Kings. Ne no, we never had hit songs. We have songs that are like really stick out as as songs in the catalog that are streaming all the time and mm. people are, are real important songs for people's um, 
lives and, and, and people listen to the songs a lot and whether it's <coughs> This Land is Your Land by Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings or How Long Do I Have to Wait by Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings or The World's Going Up in Flames by Charles Bradley. These are songs that um, are, are really important parts of our catalog, but it, it's, it's still underground, you know. Mm. It's still that, it's and it's funny, man. I was I was just just yesterday. I played a little uh, a little gig up at the hill, like a little jazz duo. Okay. And there were the, it was it was these break dancers were there, and and I was like, man, you know, I have a record label, and and you know, I know that there's a couple of songs that that break dancers like from our catalog, uh -huh. and they were, they didn't know anything, and I was like. And you know this one? And I played Up From the South from the Budos band, which is like, dong, like, yeah. dig a dig a dang, da da da. Every break dancer knows this song. They don't know it's the Budos <laughs> band. And they, I started playing it within two seconds. They're like, what? That's your song? Like, and, I, and I was like, how about this one? It was the Charles Bradley Take It As It Comes. Right. Da, 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 da. Every break dancer knows that. So cool. Those songs, right? But it's not. So that that that's a certain type of hit, you know. Right, 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 right. But commercial hits. But commercial hits where we, you know, I, I we 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 I don't think we ever could afford to chase that because even even just paying the radio pluggers. So you have to pay to play, pretty I much mean, in that you respect. Have, you have to get those songs in in those. Uh, yeah, man. Major the, labels have exactly. that shit on lock. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like you have to, they have these radio programmers that can go into, you know, you're dealing with corporations, right? You're dealing right, with right. major media corporations like Clear Channel who mm. own all of the radio stations. Uh -huh. You can't just walk in through that door. Right. It's not like back in the day, right? Back in the day, back it was in easier the day, because you had radio personalities that were really that the the, the, the disc jockeys were breaking right. records. Exactly. You know, you 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 knew the DJ from, and it was regional, right? You right. had a DJ, this one DJ, Art LeBeau in in LA. Like if he played your record, that you know, and then he played it again, then other DJs from other cities may be uh, checking it uh, out, uh. and they're playing like you know an, a Wilson Pickett record, right. you know, like. Uh, funky Broadway or something right. and it's like whoa that felt good you know he's having some luck with it and it was really the DJs making the calls mm. and probably do you know labels are coming in and, and hitting the DJ up with a hundred bucks but now it's it's all the it's big corporations are deciding what those right. what's being played right and and the advertisers are own the corporation uh, those those radio stations because without the advertiser you know it's just it's 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 really it, it's it's money from from way up. Check Sad, it out. But true. But you can still make you know the thing about the streaming thing, man. Right. If you make great music, then it's gonna bubble to the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I got a few songs out there, you know, people are still interested Dig in. Dig it, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. On the, on the, on the, Keep that shit alive. Hey, but hey, big time. Hey, check it out. Uh, as as uh, Soul Issues fans know, uh, at every show, uh, I have a focus artist, and today's focus artist is, I could actually say my guest is actually my focus artist, but, <laughs> but today's focus artist is, or are, the impressions. Can I get a hot on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The impressions, okay, we're gonna do it right here. <laughs> the impressions right here. So tell me your uh, experience with the impressions, uh, musically, how they, how did they move you? What was your first you, encounter? You know, you know, it's funny because you asked like, hey, we do this segment right. called, uh, and, and featured artists who influenced you. Right. And you know, that, that's, a, that, that's a common question, like who right. are your influences? And, and, and there are some really like, and, and then I was like, man, I, I, I don't know, let, let me get back to you. Right, exactly, right. And then right. I get another text <laughs> from, from Reggie like, bro, we're moving forward on this. <laughs> Can you please tell me who your influences are? And and then and, you know and then I, I I in the back of my mind I'm always like my favorite band is the Impressions. Ah. So whether like how much but how much they influenced me, um, my music is probably not tons as an influence. Right. But what they have done is um, kept me a music lover. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I thought about it. Like, well, first of all, if anyone isn't r completely familiar with the impressions, Curtis Mayfield's. It yes. was Curtis Mayfield's band in exactly. the '60s. Now, Curtis May and and it's Fred Cash. So it's a singing group. They were a doo-wop group, which right. is like you have Fred Cash in the middle and Jerry Butler. 
is on the, on, if Jed Curtis, Fred, and Jerry Butler. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And and each of them and and, and Curtis, Curtis Mayfield. Mayfield wrote music. Move on up. That was the impressions. Yeah. Was actually. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. Curtis. That wasn't Curtis that after. Would have been, that would have been, he, you know, he, he did, he, after the Impressions broke up, he would still Continue. do a lot okay. of songs. But, but it was under the heading of the Impressions. I think originally, yeah. Really? That's interesting. And, um, okay. I'm singing that song and, and, Yeah, and like, you know, We're a Winner. Right, exactly. Oh, 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 you got to see this one. I, I don't know if, I, if you saw, I did, a, um, <laughs> which is funny, but actually I'm going to use it for something later on. When the COVID, like, really first was announced, I didn't even know this song. And I was just looking up Curtis Mayfield, Curtis Mayfield. And I was thinking of, you know, how to flip songs and, and you know, uh, put some COVID lyrics or whatever in it and like this. So I did that. I did that also with... Um, so the, super, the band was called the Super Spreaders? Right, I, got, I, don't know, I didn't give a name. But I said, from my bathroom to yours. You know, that was my thing. And I did, uh, um, it's a shame, but COVID night, I'll show it to you what I did. And also, but, but um, we are winner. Oh man, when I first I said, oh, you know, you want those songs, well, you get, yeah, oh yeah. man. Well, that, that's what I was going to say, man. Like, oh. So the impressions, like, some, you know, man, we're all dealing with a lot of shit now. And sometimes music isn't really in the forefront of our lives. Mm. And as you get older and things, you know, your family and things change. And certainly now I, I find myself like listening to tons of news, like obsessed, obsessively in the age of Donald Trump. You, get, you got to be able to, you have to be able to um, uh, look at it. This is what I like say. You look at it, you hear what it is, you acknowledge that it is, exists. And then you get it out of your system. Yeah, man, man, I have a hard time getting it out of my system. You gotta man. do it, man. You gotta do it. You, yeah. I, if rough. you want to be healthy yeah. Yeah. No, and be a around very, for a while, you gotta do it. Otherwise, very, you're gonna I'm, you're gonna I'm, become consumed. I'm in a very unhealthy predicament at the moment. I'm uh -huh. just saying, like, I'm obsessed with news and 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 just the way the shit's unfolding, and, right? And the in, inequalities that are right. happening. I'm I'm just like I'm I, I'm and I'm living in Switzerland and my home is the U.S. and it's, there's a lot of complicated things and I end up, I spend a lot of time because my wife is working and I, I work in the evening mostly right. with the label so I have time in the afternoons and I listen to these podcasts of people just telling me terrible news mm -hmm. day in, day out. And I'm just, listen man, it's my little thing, I'll get through it and I'll deal with it. But, but every once, in, but when I need to realize like music is my life I put an impression song on no matter what an impressions album mm. we're a winner mm. um, Queen Majesty mm. I mean you know I'm aware of love these beautiful mm. beautiful songs like mm. that are so well played and so well arranged and so well mm. sung and lyrically deep and every, so that's that's where I'm at with the impressions man whenever I need a little like to get away I can put that on or I can sit somewhere and put the impressions on and it just it's like <sighs> cool and it can make me cry it can make me laugh right I, I did, you know it, it's it's there it's that's uh, deep music man let me ask and it's you not and it's it's not like it's jazz and it, right and, you know I need to oh man why can't I play like Hank Mobley right and, you know because I practice and I'm listening to the music right. as a musician sometimes you serve a purpose to help you like I'm looking for ideas for my band okay. or ideas for me to play, but when I when I can get in a place with the impressions, mm. it's just it's it's for me. It's like there you go. It washes over me. There you go. These vocals and the way these guys sing. Right. And, which and leads to my question, um, which I think you probably just answered. How do you deal? Maybe you can. Maybe it's also for my audience too. How do you deal with frustration? Maybe oh, I hope it could be a loaded question. <laughs> I don't know. Drink? But I, uh. <laughs> come on, give some positive, give some positive informations no, to the people. Hey, man. Like, come like you know, that, that, that's the impressions. Give like, some. listen, like, I'm just saying, like, that's, you, 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 whoops. No problem. It's funny, like, when you, you know, normally when someone would ask, like, what your um, influences are, like, again, that's, I'm, I, I'm, you, this is the band, this is music that I can, is, is just pure for me in my head. And that would be like the shit that I'd listen to if I'm frustrated and I really want to get outside myself. Mm. And that's what good art does, right? right. It takes you, it really, it's an escape. 
Right. So would you recommend that to the audience? I mean, to the people. I, I, right there. Y y the, yes, anything from the impressions, but 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 you know, it's 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 not. Um, yeah, you, it's it's deep music, man. You gotta you gotta give it a second, you know. Mm. Like it, it's it's some of it is very, you know, expressionistic and beautiful, and 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 I just hope that people aren't listening to it like. It sounds corny to them. I mean, it's so well sung and it's root gospel roots, but very well arranged. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's totally amazing. I mean, I mean, if you think about all of those artists, all of those uh, I call them pioneers um, that really set the stage for us. And a lot of people don't. They don't. And going back to what I was saying before, um, acknowledging them doesn't depreciate what you're doing. It actually, it, uh, um, um, how can I, it makes it grow, it makes you look even better, you know? Because hey, not only are you a great artist uh, and you're doing your thing, but you're acknowledging, the, you're acknowledging the greats before you. Oh man. You know, and that's like the whole lineage, man, united we stand type of understanding, yeah. you know? So we have a few more minutes here. I want to ask you about uh, today. What's what's happening now uh, in the in the realm of um, uh, Deptone Records? What's happening uh, with the uh, uh, Dap Kings? What's happening uh, with Sugar Man? Yeah. Okay. Easy. Yeah. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So 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 you know. I mean, if anyone just just to fill people the people in who who aren't haven't aren't completely familiar, they're just discovering this, what Daptone Records is through this television show and interview that right. we're having right now. So the label had um, a lot of success through the 2000s, primarily with the biggest two acts on the label, which were Charles Bradley and Sharon Jones. Four years ago, Sharon passed away. They, she, she had been struggling with pancreatic cancer for um, two years prior to that. She actually, man, crazy story, she was watching the Trump election, and when Trump started winning, she had a stroke. No shit. And um, she passed away about a week later into that, man. It was like, uh, she, you know, and, and uh, you know, I mean, she was very sick, so. Um, and then uh, about a, two years, a year later, Charles Bradley got sick and passed away from stomach cancer. It's just, so it was a really like a, a real blow for mm, the label mm, and mm. you know it's funny like and the Dap Kings were this band that that backed these artists and and recorded in the studio and everyone's like well what what's the band gonna do you know and it it's not doesn't make like just not another Sharon Jones is not another Charles Bradley so like what's the point you know so we were in a funny position, but we were still putting records out and we started signing stuff that wasn't, that we weren't necessarily playing on. So mm. in that respect, it is, it was a new phase for the label, but you know, okay. we, like we put out a Cuban band, this band Orchestra Akakon, who were making great records. Um, my partner Gabe was originally from Riverside, California. Okay. Yeah, so he ended up going back to Riverside and he opened a studio there. And there's actually kind of a cool scene going on out in California right now, which is mostly like, these chulo dudes, right? You know, like these Mexican guys right. who are deep into soul music. Like that's their shit. Like you go to these car shows and they're just like listening to impressions, like ballads, exactly. Like soul right, ballads, right, 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 right. Deepest, right. Deep, deep cuts, right. persuaders. You know, right. like right. really heavy stuff. So there's a lot. There's a there's a bunch of young bands now coming up doing mm. that stuff. So we signed this band from San Diego called The Sacred Souls. Okay. Um, these two Mexican dudes and a black dude is singing and, cool. and they're like crushing. Mm. And we, so we, we started this little subsidiary for that scene called Penrose. And um, you know, so it's, it's, it's exciting. There's, there's, there's more records as you know, everyone's producing records. We put out this reggae record by this band, The Frighteners, which okay. is just insanely good. Wow. Um, so it's a different phase in the fact that we started out, I think we started the label basically as, as an opportunity for me and Gabe to put our records out, records that we were deeply involved in. And now it's more about us sort of passing on the uh, 
baton, as you will. Cool. But but really trying to support these other artists and, and hook them up with good production and our experience as producers and um, putting them in the studio that we're still running mm. with with the right producer to make their music come alive. So cool. It's 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 an interesting time, you know, and and, and it's real different. It's and it's hard to break artists these days. You know, the, the noise is, imagine, is a lot yeah. of noise, man. But you know, we have a little bit of a reputation, so people are list they'll they'll check it out. Cool. So if it's good, it's gonna it's cool. gonna go. So they can check out um they can go to our website Daptones, yeah, yeah. daptonerecords.com or cool. you can go to Spotify and plug in Daptone and you should see the playlists of all the new stuff we're putting out. Well, Brother Neil. You're right there. We're right here. On the hour. Man, I tell you, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. I, I feel like I've known you longer than I've known <laughs> you. Much longer than I've known you. And um, I want to say thank you for um, participating uh, in the soul issues train that's moving. Yeah, yeah keep putting moving. up soul. Keep, keep it on up. Um, so um, all the best and um, who knows? Maybe Let's we can collaborate in the near future. Yes. I'm hoping Let's so definitely too. play some music together, man. So um, to you out there, to you beautiful souls out there that love soul music, I want to say thank you also for participating. I really appreciate your interest in what I'm doing in the show. And until next time, which will be very soon, please keep it tuned into Soul Issues. And whatever you're doing, make sure it's beneficial for today and for tomorrow. So don't forget, I'm your host with the most, or I am the host with the most, Reggie Saunders. Peace. See you <laughs> next time. Yeah.